What's going on, everyone? Welcome to this Starlink launch on this beautiful Wednesday, Wednesday morning. Yes, man, it looks awesome down there in Florida right now. It's pretty gloomy here in Ohio. Sucks. Where are you from? What you munching on? And if you'd like to share, how's the weather where you're at? Locals chat. For those of you who are locals members, I got the locals chat up. In sight of the ages happening now what are we launching we are launching well we're not launching anything but spacex is launching 48 more starlink satellites to the fourth shell in orbit this is 410 although i don't really know if it's the 10th launch to the fourth shell they get these out of order when they launch from different coasts <laughs> so we're just gonna roll with it what's going on meg i keep wanting to say mega tooth meg tooth yes instantaneous launch window 845 a.m. so we're about t minus eight minutes away exciting stuff you love the intro i appreciate that i'll update it once we get uh, this orbital this starship orbital launch in the air it's always fun to update that that intro actually is kind of a pain in the ass wan jockey good to see you in both the locals chat and the rumbles rants for those of you on your pc desktop laptops you can uh, participate in the in the rumble rants chat on the right hand side of your window there Kilroy7, good morning from Alberta. We got Canada in the house. Let me get this pulled up. Here we go. <laughs> Welcome to French Canada. French Canada. Inner truth, Florida, gorgeous weather. Like I was saying, it looks gorgeous. A little choppy on the seas maybe, or uh, maybe that's just pixelated. <laughs> 
Revenger Extra Extra Large. Howdy, howdy there, partner. <laughs> A. Biero. Yo, Kevin T. T, huh? I'm going to guess you're from London. You sound like you're from London. I don't like tea. I've only, you know, I never drank tea ever. And then like a year ago, I decided to do like a cleanse thing. Don't know how to make tea. I was putting all kinds of shit in the, the teapot, like honey and cinnamon. And, and uh, I can't remember, like a little bit of vinegar. It was, it was weird. I, I hated every second of it. I didn't really feel cleansed afterwards. So I'm never drinking tea again. Sun tea is the worst. My grandma used to make that. I throw up just from smelling it. Kekelso, Lakeland, Florida. Usually Bartow, but I'm in the office this morning. It's overcast here. Ooh, sweet launches. Uh, we'll get here to the mission in a second. Finish up the muster. <laughs> Revenger, Disabled Park Hour. You guys use different names uh, between these different streaming platforms, so it's hard to keep track of who's who. It's good to see some familiar faces. Make tooth coming from Wilmington, North Carolina. Awesome. You coastal, you coastal regions are participating today. It's good to see everyone. So, like I was saying, this is another Starlink launch. All right, from the East Coast. We're at Slick 40 today, launching 48 Starlink satellites. SpaceX has started their live stream, obviously. We missed the uh well, I shouldn't say we because I was doing the intro, you guys missed their little internet or was it national women's day or whatever it was yesterday i didn't even realize it but the lawyer wife came home early from work because i guess she was forced to attend something like that <laughs> and she was like that was the biggest waste of time ever going to this women's conference she went to and i was like well yeah that's because you're already empowered <laughs> you don't need to be reminded you're empowered empowered people don't need to be told they're empowered but that's just my unpopular opinion Right on, guys. Good to see you. Good to see you in the chat. Cranberry, Texas. Texas. And Wisconsin. Now I'm hungry for cheese. Once again, second live stream in a row. I uh, I guess I got to do the America thing, but hold on one sec. There we go. Come on, is this a communist country or something? I thought this no, was America. America. It's my favorite one. Um, no mug today. I since it's the second stream in a row where I I woke up, you know, let the dogs out to go potty, fed the dogs because they come first, right? So I didn't eat breakfast, didn't get my workout in. So as soon as this stream is done, I'm gonna hop over there in the gym and get that over with. Okay, South Dakota, good to see you. Let's go big screen since we're getting closer. T minus four minute. Luma wipe, Whoosh, nice. So. You guys might have to tell me, but from what I was seeing during the intro, we're about 30 to 45 seconds behind on your end. On my end, we're live, but I think Rumble might have a little bit of delay there. Just let me know. Nothing I can really do about that. Uh, if you want to watch on a separate window, I have the link to SpaceX's live stream in the description below. So you always got that option. The claw has retracted. The strong back there, that keeps the rocket stable don't need it no more but they are still feeding it um, some electricity to that payload there you'll see the little umbilical cord umbilical cord right there that will disconnect as soon as the rocket launches don't worry she's supposed to be smoking that's completely nominal all right they uh, load that cryo fuel on there that that locks in the rp1 which is just rocket grade kerosene and uh it's 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 cryo temp to get as much of them fuel molecules and oxygen molecules on there as possible. But once they load it on there, it starts warming up and boiling off and they need to vent that and also mix with the warmer Texas air makes it a little bit more smoky, man. I was just in uh, Boca Chica for the presentation last month, but I'm already missing the coast. I only, I only got to uh, stand on the beach for those live streams I did for those videos. I didn't really get to enjoy my time there. I was busy working the whole time, but man, I miss, I miss the beach, dude. Slash swamps. Sup, Dan B Bubya? <laughs> That's fun to say. Dan Bubya. 
Is this going south or north? Anyone know? Um, I, I believe it's going south. All these Shell 4 launches have been going south, and they've been st stationing the drone ships down there by the Bahamas. And they'll be using a short fall of Gravitas for this one. We got to see a quick view of that poop deck cam there for a second. Four degrees Fahrenheit from South Dakota. And I thought I had it bad. We had a couple days last week where it was pretty nice. It was actually 74 at one point. Um, it was awesome. I got to run outside and work out outside, but uh, not today. Today I'm stuck in the gym. It was nice though to get that, uh, get that nice experience in. Check it out. We got a Rumbles Rants Super Chat Equivalent. USA Matt, thanks for the tip. Thanks for broadcasting on Rumble. Well, I appreciate the support on Rumble. Rumble actually gives you uh, a bit, gives their creators a bigger cut of those super chats or super rants. So I appreciate you, bro. Thank you so much. All right, let's turn the volume up and let's get ready to uh, enjoy the sounds of controlled explosions, controlled boom times, or broom times, as the Russians now call it. LD has given that go for launch. All systems are go. Let's listen in to the terminal countdown and watch as Falcon 9 seconds. takes our Starlink satellites to space. I do have doggo came up. I'll have to get the doggos in here after the launch. Two 10, 9, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and just full power. And lift off, Falcon 9, 7, 4, 10. Get it! Vehicle's pitching that way. Cyber Herbalist, another familiar face or familiar name. Hey, Kev, go for launch. Thanks for that tip, brother. Appreciate you. See if we get to see the uh, Sonic Falcon 9 boom. has successfully lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, carrying our stack of 48. Our telemetry nominal. Carrying our stack of 48 Starlink satellites to low Earth orbit. Moments ago, we throttled the nine M1D engines down, reducing the speed by decreasing the flow Vehicle of supersonic. fuel to the engine. Now that's in preparation for max Q, which is the maximum aerodynamic pressure that the vehicle will see coming up in just a few seconds. Hey, Dan W. Yeah, I don't think you can max do the Q. rumble rants on your phone. There's max Q. But I appreciate the effort. And we will have three events happening here shortly. We will have main engine cutoff, stage separation, and second engine startup one. Now, main engine cutoff is where all nine of those M1D engines currently burning will shut off to sl slow the vehicle down in preparation for the next event, stage separation. Now, this is where the first and second stages will separate. Now, the start of our second engine, MVAC chill, has started, as you just heard. Now, after stage separation, the first stage will make its way back down to Earth for landing, uh, whereas the second stage Look south will continue to me. on its journey to the third event of second engine startup one. That's where that single MVAC engine will light up and propel the second stage along with the Starlink satellites to orbit. Kilroy 7 is on the his cool Xbox. Cool views of the nice. first stage with, that Earth, with the Earth in the background. I never use my my Xbox for just about that 10 kind of stuff. seconds from main engine cutoff. She really gimbled there for a second. You see that? Camera inside the inner stage, looking at the second stage vacuum engine bell there. Stage separation confirmed. Off. And she's away. Light it. Do it. Do it meow. Yeah. You can see on those cool 
You can see on those cool live views of the first and second stage, uh, you can see the fairing have just popped off there, um, but we did have a successful main engine cutoff stage separation. Fairing separation confirmed. And second engine startup one. All right, I'm just gonna turn her down a little bit. So we saw the fairing halves separate. Those are each worth $3 million, $6 million total between the two of them, if my math checks out. So Elon likes to reuse those. What they do is they strap big old Ram Air style chutes bra to them. They re-enter the atmosphere, they deploy the chutes, they splash down the ocean. They used to land them in nets in these big ships. They don't do that anymore. They just splash them down the ocean and they'll scoop them up, save them some money. So we got these grid fins, what she was just talking about right her. These are made of titanium. They used to be made of like aluminum. And uh, when they re-enter the atmosphere, they'd burn extra holes in them. So now they use titanium. And they're about the size of a smart car. And you'll see these poofs of cold nitrogen gas. Those are like to help orient the rocket in a vacuum and steer it a little bit. But once it reaches the denser parts of the atmosphere, these fins will take over with the navigation and kind of aim it toward the drone ship more. The second burn it's quite sophisticated. And this is a single engine burn that brings the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to land on our drone ship. How does SpaceX decide who will MC, I like it, MC each launch? Uh, maybe they just draw names out of a hat. I'm guessing they're using a woman on purpose today because of the International Women's Day yesterday. Oh, 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 we got in here. What's up, peeps? Peoples. You missed the launch bra. You're tardy to the party. Um, I actually knew a SpaceX employee who once, uh, who once applied to become an MC for these SpaceX streams, but uh, he was rejected. Rejected. Probably because he's white. <laughs> That's a bad joke. And the seventh Starlink mission of 2022 so far. So this is the uh, fourth flight for this booster. I didn't say that earlier. Fourth flight. Now the Merlin engines on that first stage are optimized for sea level. So they achieve 190,000 pounds of thrust during ascent and descent. And in contrast, that MVAC engine that you see on the right side of your screen is optimized for 220,500 pounds of thrust in vacuum. And the main difference between these two engines is the size of that nozzle that you can see on the second stage there. It's much bigger than the M1Ds on the first stage. Cyber Herbalist, I do wonder how much it costs There's to also recondition cool the booster and fairing for the next reuse. Grid fins on those live Cheaper than Starship or more expensive left. than Starship And probably. these are four hypersonic grid fins that are positioned near the top of the first stage. And they help to guide and steer that first stage as it re Let's talk about that actually a little bit. So, like I said, they used to catch the fairing halves on the, in the nets on the ships. Now they just splash them down in the in the seawater. And during our last live stream, we talked about this a little bit, but that kit, at first that had to be a pain in the ass because uh, seawater is very corrosive. Um, water is like the best solvent <laughs> on the planet. Um, when I was in the Navy, we do these open water ocean swims with these you know metal CO2 cartridges that we would need to use to inflate our, our life vest if we had to. And by the time we got out of the water, those things would be completely green and corroded and, and brown and gross. So it's, it's, it's it can't be easy. It can't be easy to, to refurbish these uh, fairing halves that splash down the ocean. But obviously it makes more sense than trying to catch them in, in, the, uh, in the nets. <clears throat> Coming in fast there on the left-hand side of your screen. About to do a little bit of cloud licking, bro. So, uh, yeah, and to refurbish a booster, obviously they got it down pretty well. I know Elon at one point wanted to uh, have that time frame down in just a couple days, uh, but uh, now that he's focusing on Starship, that's no longer like a priority. But in the long run, in the long term, Starship's supposed to be easier to refurbish. It's basically nil, no refurbishment necessary. That way they can do rapid reuse and that's how Starship's really going to be worth worth the money. All right, we're about to come in for a landing here in about a minute. Time to get excited. We're just under Hopefully a we minute get to, see it. to the stage one landing burn. That should start at about T plus eight minutes and 25 seconds. 
And for those who follow along, that entry burn that we just did is the reason that we have soot on that first stage. So when we fly through our own, or in Falcon 9, when Falcon 9 flies through its own plume during that entry burn, uh, that plume deposits the soot from our carbon-based fuel as it burns onto the sides of the first stage. Start of terminal guidance. Coming up really shortly on stage one, landing burn start. Good to see you made it, Ian. Justin, good to see stage you, bro. Stage one, landing burn. Revenger. Disabled park hopper got to. We started uh, our stage one launch. landing nice. burn. We may or may not have videos for this. You may, you shall. Let's go. Come on, come on, poop deck cam. Do your job. We should have second engine stage cutoff. Stage one landing like deploy. Here shortly as well. Oh. Man, that water looks blue. And back engine cutoff. It's another bad joke. Here you go, south confirmed. There's second engine cutoff. We're waiting on confirmation of that stage one landing. Dan Dubia, first rumble rant test. Keep it up, Kevin. Thank you so much for a tip. Glad you got it figured out. <laughs> Love you long time. Poop, poop deck cam let us down, guys. Freaking guy. Nominal orbital insertion. We're we not just hearing get confirmation. confirmation of a good orbit from our second stage carrying for the first our stage, we're not hearing satellites. confirmation. I'm worried. We are now waiting miss? for the deployment of our 48 Starlink satellites, which is scheduled to occur about a little under an hour from now. I wonder if the first stage missed. By now, we usually get Expected some sort of confirmation. It's when SpaceX ignores that it's even going on is when you should get nervous. Like, uh, should we tell everybody that the, the booster missed the drone ship? Do it. Tell us. We deserve to know. We are an entitled society. No secrets. It looks like we did get confirmation from the teams that we did have a successful first stage landing, even though Good. we haven't received any video or live views from that. Um, but this does mark the 110th successful landing of our good. Falcon first stage, including Falcon Heavy. Um, we did have a good orbit for our uh, second stage, and we're now just waiting on the deployment of our Starlink satellites. As I mentioned before, we won't have live audio or visual confirmation for payload deployment, either currently due to lack of ground station coverage. There we There's go. There's that Falcon 9 first stage on our drone ship. Lovely. But again, we will regain signal from our ground station at T plus one hour and 19 minutes. Uh, so for those of you who are interested, we will keep the audio only countdown nets up on our YouTube channel and we'll confirm successful payload deployment of our St Starlink satellites on our social media channels. But with that, cool view of the first stage on the drone ship that will bring today's webcast to an end. Our team at SpaceX would like to send a big thank you to Peeps is stoked, brah. Okay, so uh, again, to be expected, another East Coast launch of the force shell. They're not going to uh, have signal during payload deployment, so they're ending their live stream, uh, but you can follow along with their mission control audio. Uh, I don't have the links, so you're just gonna have to find it yourself, you lazy bastards. <laughs> okay, um, there is something though I wanted to do for you guys before I call it a day. Uh, for those of you who are locals members, you'll see that I did a locals only or a members, a supporters only post yesterday morning. Uh, there's this game. It's not a new game. It's kind of new to me, but uh, there's this game that is by far the most, you know, engineering based science driven game I've ever played in my life. It's on PC. I don't think it's on console, but uh, if you watch that video, if you're a supporter on Locals, you, you know I didn't have a happy ending. I couldn't get the freaking airlock figured out, so I just ended up opening up my my visor and killing myself. And this game is going to be right up a lot of your guys' alley, so I kind of want to share it with the rest of you. The good news is last night I toyed around a little bit more with it, and I got it figured out. I got my airlock working, so I kind of want to take, take a minute to brag about that because I am a nerd at heart, okay? So let me get this pulled up. So the game is called, uh, actually, I'm not going to spoil it yet. Let me get it pulled up first. Got to open Steam. 
This may be a second. Elon's base twats. Yeah, we do have one I guess we can cover uh, as well really quick. He twatted again after our video yesterday. I'm juggling multiple things at once. This is going to be dangerous. Okay. Let's go to uh, display one big. So yesterday we ended the video, our uh, SpaceX news video, talking about or just briefly mentioning ESGs and how <laughs> I was actually pleasantly surprised to see Elon uh, Elon mention this topic because it's something I have discussed uh, in in the past, and uh, I I I couldn't believe it when I found out about them. Uh, they've been around for a while, but they've been heavily corrupted over the past you know decade or so, especially since like the Paris Climate Accords came around, and this is something that's really been uh, implement, uh, been, uh, taken from Europe, like woke Europe, I would say. So <clears throat> ESGs stands for environmental, social, corporate governance, basically. And it's what it is now, what it is today is it's a, uh, it's the woke U S version of the Chinese communist party's social credit system. Uh, it started out for like, uh, corporations as like a way to determine what corporate what corporate investments, what investments are good for, you know, the corporate enterprises and, um, you know, who's risky, who's not as far as, you know, environmental stance, the corporation's taking a social, uh, social, social justice stance they're taking or how many, you know, minorities they have on their board, stuff like that. But like I said, and this is what Elon and, and the other guy, Andre, Andre or whatever his name is, this is what they were hinting at <clears throat> this kind of stuff. But, uh, it's been it's it's now being used for individuals as well not just corporations so um before they would target and they have targeted like things that weren't considered um socially or weren't considered politically correct like gun manufacturers um you know stuff like that but now they're also giving individual people an esg score so if you invest in something like a you know a gun shop then your esg score lowers and uh it's basically a way to it's basically cancel culture that's what it is it's cancel culture if you're not if you're not following the desired politically correct narrative of the day then they're going to hurt you financially and it's a way to um basically cancel people weed people out you know it's cancel culture that's what it is and elon tweeted last night esg or yesterday afternoon esg should be deleted if not fixed and uh definitely with the former rather than the latter just freaking delete it it's there's they're so corrupted it, it's 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 such a dishonest way of doing things man you do things our way what we consider politically correct we're just going to shut you out we're not going to let you get loans from banks and stuff like that like go f yourselves anyway so that's all i really wanted to say about that um not really in the mood to talk about russia or ukraine a lot of us already know what the deal is with that Ooh, I just breathed in really deep and I heard my back crack. I'm getting old. I'm an old man. Yeah. ESG's turning into digital ID. Absolutely. And actually, that's something, speaking of Russia and Ukraine, that's something I just uh, saw a video of. One of the... Um, leaders of Ukraine was just talking about how they're using this opportunity to implement a digital ID and vaccine passports and stuff like that. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> just can't get away from this stuff. It's uh, again, just from like from our last stream, there's a lot of reasons this war started mainly because NATO was moving to the East toward Russia and Russia saw that as a threat. Uh, Ukraine wants to join NATO. They, the U S was instigating things by saying, yeah, Ukraine's going to join NATO because Kamal Harris is a dumbass." And, and um, they want to join the EU. Uh, their own parliamentary members were saying members were saying they want uh, they want to fight for the new world order, that kind of stuff. And that whole interview I saw with that leader guy uh, yesterday was just more evidence of that. And it's 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 Putin's national fascism versus what Ukraine wants to join the the international you know, socialism, one world government, fascism. It's international fascism versus versus national fascism. And, and those of us who are pro individual liberty people are on neither side. That's why I've said I don't stand with the Ukrainian government. I stand with the Ukrainian people. 
Uh, same with Russian people, you know. I don't want this war because war brings casualties and collateral damage and it's not good. We're suffering. You have all these, and this goes back to the new world order thing and the great reset. You have all these woke companies that are essentially canceling Russia, hurting the Russian people. Uh, like even McDonald's was pressured into boy there. Like this whole boycott McDonald's thing was trending on to water, uh, until McDonald's would uh, pull their business from Russia, which they just did. I believe it was yesterday. So it's, 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 you gotta be, you gotta be, you gotta be very skeptical. It's very suspect when you see all these e going back to ESGs, you know, they want their good scores or good social credit scores. These companies do, uh, so they're gonna they're gonna play along and they're gonna participate in cancel culture, which is why I really respected Elon when he said, "No, we're not gonna shut out Russian media from from our um, using our services." So, if you think this kind of stuff won't be used, like if you think the stuff that's they're using against the Russian people right now can't be used against you one day, again, it's 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 international fascism versus national fascism. It will be used against you one day if it's not stopped. Okay, so that's all I'm going to say about that. But let's talk about this game I'm I'm uh I was getting to. We're going to have to go to a different screen here. Let's see if this works. Play. All right. Let's see if this works. Move this to a different screen. It's very dark in here. <laughs> Come on. Come on, baby, work. She's trying. She's thinking. Yep. Here we go. It should pop up. There it is. All right. Station here. So this game is brought to you by the same developers that brought us Icarus. For those of you who have been a fan of Cloud Liquor for a while, uh, I'm still boycotting Icarus because they still haven't implemented the space station. So, uh, yeah, I'm not playing that game until I get that in there. If you devs are watching, I might want to turn my settings down. Uh, I might end up screwing things up. I don't know how this is going to work out. Maybe. Oh, I didn't hit apply. Such a noob move. Nope, that didn't work. <laughs> uh, we'll just turn the frames per second down. How about that? Let's just do that. Okay, hopefully that's good enough. So what station... <laughs> Load up my safe here. So what Station Ears is, is it's a uh, space-based survival game. I love my survival games. And it is so scientifically and engineering involved it's crazy and i figured out how to do third person so yay for me and then i spray painted my suit from yellow to blue because blue is a better color a amen i'm sorry it's international women's day yesterday a women yay for me my jetpack is awesome and your gel and there is the space station i built now we're on mars you can play on different planets or even in the vacuum of space if you want and make a space station but um I decided to do Mars because as an atmosphere, it's a little bit easier for noobs like me. I got about seven, eight hours in this game. I've only done mostly the tutorials. This is the first base I've ever built that actually has a working airlock, but I'll tell you how I F this all up here in a second. This is an O2 canister that you got. This is all you start out with right here. This is the stuff. Uh, I'm missing a couple of these crates because I took them off the, <laughs> the ship and then a Martian dust storm came through and blew him away. You'd think I learned my lesson, but I didn't. This game is the Martian, the game, like the Matt Damon movie. Uh, I've had to build all this stuff. And uh, like, if you're an engineer, you'll still find this game kind of difficult. If you're a you know, botanist, you'll find this game kind of difficult. If you're a computer programmer, you'll still find this game a little bit difficult. It's like you have to be Baskin Robbins. You have to be all 31 flavors, brah. Oh shit. <laughs> uh, so I do not know how to program yet in this game. I haven't even tried yet, but it's pretty complicated. You have to make things like memory cards and, you know, math, chi math chips. So I, this is how I set up my, my power station. I just had these, you know, passive, you know, stationary, solar panels built on these different sides of this frame I built. That way I don't have to build a, 
you know, a single standing solar panel that can actuate and follow the sun's rays because that requires a lot of programming. So I just did it this way. <laughs> so so this, there will always be a solar panel facing somewhat directly into the sun. You have to wire it up. This is my airlock right here. I think the sun's actually going down. Yeah, it's going down, so it's about to get dark. So for those of you who are supporters on Locals, you saw me try to set this same kind of setup uh, yesterday, but I failed. I couldn't get the airlock to work, but I figured out what my mistake was. So we're going to, we're gonna turn this light on. Yeah, I even got lights hooked up. We're gonna do this thing. Hopefully I have enough battery, battery power to run this. I might wanna turn the light off actually. You got a suit. Your battery uh, runs on a, uh, or your suit runs on a battery. You have a waste tank. I should probably empty that eventually. Air tank. I had to use some of my filters in my suit for something else. I'll explain why here in a second. And check it out. I can now take off my helmet. This is the this is the place I couldn't get to yesterday. Okay. So it's. The suit's warning me there's a toxin detected in here, even though I can kind of breathe. And that's because after I got the airlock working, I got this, uh, I brought that air, that O2 canister in here and got some air in here that I could breathe. But then after I got that all set up, I not thinking straight, I ran this, uh, this uh, generator in here, which emits fumes, right? So now there's toxic fumes in here. So I, I brought this portable air scrubber that came on my ship, uh, put a battery in it, and I put in my suit CO2 scrubbers in there. And it should be still running right now, yeah. It's still running, trying to clean the air, but it's, it's, this is not a very big air scrubber, so it might take a while. It's kind of a big space. Apparently the air is not clean yet. But I just wanted to show off this game for those of you who are interested. It's called Stationeers. It's very challenging. A lot to learn. If I had a kid that was between the ages of like 11 and 17 and maybe they were directionless, didn't know what they wanted to be when they grew up, I'd throw this game at them and be like, here, maybe this will interest you. Get your uh, your juices flowing for some engineering, engineering action or maybe you want to be a stranded Martian on Mars one day. Matt Damon. So, uh, yeah, check it out. It's uh, I'm, I've only scratched the surface. Like I said, there's a ton of stuff to learn in this game, programming. Uh, I haven't even gotten to vehicles yet. I guess the ultimate goal is to survive on whatever planet you're on, get to the point where you can build a rocket and then launch to a different planet and restart the whole thing all over again. So yeah, check it out. It's called Stationeers. Um, it can be super frustrating at first because there's a lot to learn, but How you know, learning's half the fun. Hopefully that wasn't too choppy for you. I know we're live streaming and we're doing it on Rumble. But uh, let me pull up the chat one more time, then we're gonna call it a day, okay? I'm a rapper. Yes, PC. It's not on console, at least not yet. It came out in 2017. I think it was early access, but it's not early access anymore. Uh, I spent most of my time starting out playing the tutorial. Uh, since they didn't really update the tutorial while they were updating the game, there are a few parts of the tutorial where you just you can't move along because it doesn't work. But uh, that's what Rumble and YouTube and Google and DuckDuckGo is for, right? So you can try to find the answers yourself farm using your own poop that wouldn't surprise me dude not in this like in this game that would not surprise me if you had to use your own waste because you can use the uh, carbon dioxide that your machines emit you can capture that and use that to grow plants so i'm actually kind of scared how long it's going to take me to figure out how to survive in the long term on this game <laughs> it is it yeah it has co-op too good call there disabled park hopper i haven't played co-op because i have no friends peeps doesn't know how to play yet <laughs> but uh it would definitely be a lot easier with people especially people who know what they're doing <laughs> matt damon <laughs> i love that movie 
All right, guys, well, I'm going to call it a day there. You have a good one. Thanks for joining me and tuning in with me for this launch. It was a fun one. Again, uh, we should have our answers whether the uh, satellites deploy su successfully or not in about 40, 45 minutes. So keep an eye on SpaceX's stream for that, their mission control stream. You guys have a great day. Don't do anything I would do. And I'll see you uh, on Friday for our next episode. Until that time, Godspeed.